Hi, guys. If you'd like to learn more about my play Over the World or the Echo Theater Company, then watch our video. I fell in love with theater in a high school theater class, um, just started out doing improv games and uh, little short skits. And I just it was such an escape for me from uh, the other classes that I didn't enjoy. And then I started doing the after school, um, certain programs after school, and it became an escape. Uh, and I, I started to get to meet people that I started to make all kinds of friends that I never really had before. So it just became this really amazing, uh, positive thing in my life. Um, and I think I just gravitated to theater because, um, I don't know, I've always just had like, I've always done like voices and impressions and, um, things like that ever since I was a kid. And, you know, like my family, they would, everybody would kind of gather around. We'd all do little, like, you know, I do impressions and voices. And so I think I always just kind of had that natural kind of, um, um, disposition for theatricality and um just I, I don't know what it is it's, it's really hard to put into words what it is but it's just that magic that I that I feel when I go to the theater and, and when I'm around other people that are uh theatrically minded and uh it's just it's just awesome I love it and um I can't imagine uh not doing it so and I think I gravitate more towards theater over film just because of being in the presence of other humans, I think is really powerful and, and I enjoy it a lot. I think I first fell in love with writing once I started reading really good plays. Uh, I read Waiting for Godot. I read um, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead, uh, Our Town, um, just all kinds of things that I was reading. And that's when, like you said earlier, um, that I realized that that's where it starts, that that's where everything for, as far as from the play goes, that it all starts on the page. Um, and so I really started to fall in love with the, the physical script, uh, making notes in the margins and, and really like, you know, um, analyzing drama, dramaturgy and uh, things like that. Um, and so I, I just fall, I really fell in love with, with the medium, with, with the text itself and having this going into Barnes and Nobles and buying the scripts and um, reading it just as many playwrights as I could, uh, Annie Baker and Arthur Miller and Eugene O'Neill and just really just, soaking up all, all of this amazing writing. And um, so that's when I first really fell in love with writing. And then it turned into an obsession once I realized that I could do it. Once I realized that, you know, that anybody can do it, that anybody can sit down and, uh, you know, just uh, put things on the paper and see where it goes. And, and then once I uh, started to gain more confidence in my skills and uh, started to put more uh, tools in my toolkit, I really the obsession really took off because all of a sudden I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can, I can really make, um, I can really make cool stuff. Like I can, I can play around and, and it can have an effect on people. And, and then once I started to share my work and get some positive feedback, that's when I really realized that like, wow, this is, this is really cool that, that I can make something that'll affect somebody else and hopefully a positive way. And, um, and then I started having some of my scripts, um, that were being done in like uh, South Africa and Australia, uh, Costa Rica. And so that was cool to me too. Cause I was like, I could, I can just, you know, make up something and then somebody across the world can, can take it from there and do the rest. So, and once that started happening, once I started getting opportunities like that, I was, I just, I've, and ever since then I've been writing just nonstop every single day because I just, it, it's so, it's so much fun and it'll always be so much fun. I usually just start out with like a really fun idea that I like. I uh, used to when I first started writing these ideas, a lot of these ideas that I would have, I'd go, no, that's that's too silly. That's too weird. That's too out there. It's not nobody's ever seen anything like that before. Well, now I'm, get, I'm to the point where I say nobody's ever seen that before. Well, then I definitely want to write it. Um, so I come I get a I get an idea like there's a script that I had that I just started out with like a basic idea where these cavemen are are discussing philosophy with each other, really complex philosophical ideas. Um, and so the whole script just evolved from that simple idea of cavemen discussing philosophy. Um, so that's, that's, I basically just start with like an idea. And then from there I do like a first draft where I just, um, just get it out, get it done. And then I go through like a really ex uh, extensive revision process where I'm just every single detail i delete a lot. I write and I delete, I write and I delete. Um, and I just keep the good stuff and get rid of the bad stuff. 
or the stuff that I don't feel like is working as well as it should. Um, and I just, I, I revise a lot. I really, really revise probably too much sometimes, but, um, and then from there, I, I, during the revisions, I tweak structure, I tweak dialogue, I tweak everything, but, um, eventually after the revision process is done, then I try to get it in the hands of somebody and listen to it, hear it out loud. And then from there, I just do like, you know, minor polishes and hopefully, hopefully by then, if it's not working by then, then I usually just kind of put it to the side and move on because, but hopefully it's working by then. If it's working by then, then I can feel confident about it and, and start to um, actually send it to places. Um, so I use a uh, website, playsubmissionshelper.com, um, and they have a data, database with all sorts of opportunities. Um, and I found this opportunity with Echo through that database. Um, and when I was reading their website and everything they were saying about how they wanted to reach out to playwrights across the country, how they wanted to transcend um, uh, location, they wanted to transcend um geography, the, the limits of where you are in the world. And I just really was like, oh, this is an amazing opportunity for someone like me who, I, you know, I'm not out in California. I'm not in New York. I'm just in North Carolina. So uh, I was just like, wow, this is perfect. Um, and the fact that it was geared towards more younger writers who haven't really um, had a professional production or ha haven't really um, broken into things yet. So I uh, just found, I found them through that database. And then once I read their, everything about them, I was just like, this, this is perfect. Uh, and then I started to do some research into their company and um, their, you know, their past productions and the, the people that they're involved with in the LA community. And I was like, wow, this is a really, this is a really good company to be involved with. And I, and I definitely, um, you know, want to continue to work with them in any way possible. Uh, so the actual residency program, we are partnered with a professional writer. Um, I was partnered with uh, Mike Battistick. He's a uh, professional playwright and screenwriter. And we worked with each other for six months um, through video chats, through calls. And um, the other five playwrights did as well. They were all partnered with professional mentors. Um, but I worked with Mike for the past six months, um, just sending scripts back and forth, him giving me notes. Um, he set up a couple readings and things with actors that he knew. And from there, we just um, did all the revisions that we could to get the, to the final product, which now um, this weekend we'll be doing the readings. So it'll be a virtual play festival with the, with our finished products. Um, but I, basically most of the work I was, I did was with Mike. Um, but then I also did some, you know, uh, the interview process and talking back and forth with Andrew and Chris Fields and um, just getting to know some of the people at echo and them getting to know uh, me and, and basically uh, my style and the things I like to write. So the whole echo process was basically just getting to know the, the echo team. Then they handed it off to Mike and me and Mike have just been working together uh, ever since. Uh, well, it started with uh, kind of what I was saying a little bit earlier. It started with um, just a cool idea, a simple idea that I wanted to explore, which was, that there's this experiment, this, um, there's a subject and the subject is being almost interrogated and, um, they're, they're undergoing this, this experiment. And I just started with that basic idea that I thought was an interesting theatrical idea. Um, and then from there, me and Mike really started to, um, add a lot of details, really layer in a lot of stuff as far as specifics of what the experiment is. Um, what exactly is happening, um, what the, just all the details of characterization and everything, um, that started to get layered in as we went. And um, I think the reason that I had to write this was, um, it was a way for me to kind of express the times that we're in, the polarization, um, the divide that we're experiencing in our country right now. Um, the, the feeling of being manipulated by different entities on, on all sides and the feeling of being kind of trapped within something and um, that you really don't know how to get out of. And so all of that, I think I, I just expressed through this script and, and I, I had to, I had to write it to, to just, um, to just express, I think what I'm going through and what a lot of people are going through right now, which is sometimes this feeling of uh, helplessness um, that you're kind of trapped within a system that's much bigger than you are. 
and uh, just how can you how can you how can you navigate that and how can you uh, you know still be the best person that you can be and, and figure out what you have to do for yourself that's going to best benefit you and the people of the world. I mean, um, so yeah, I would say, I would say I had to write it just because of, um, uh, the state of the world right now and the state of, of, uh, of our country and just trying to just express that the best and be as honest to that as I possibly could. So with over the world, um, a big thing with a lot of my writing is I don't want to tell the audience what to think. I don't want to tell them what to believe. I don't want to lecture them. I just want them to be entertained. I want them to have a, um, I want them to sit forward in their seats and, and be engaged and, um, and really um, almost kind of escape. But um the main thing that I'm going for is I just want to hold attention. I want to hold the audience's attention. I want them to, to be interested every step of the way. I want them to follow it. And then I want them to make their own conclusions. I want them to find their own meaning um, based off their own perspective and whatever they're going through at the time. Um, I really don't have a specific thing that I want them to feel other than I hope that they have a cathartic experience. I hope that they, that they have an experience that, um, that can somehow be a powerful healing, um, process that can allow them to maybe, uh, just like with me as the writer, like this play has helped me kind of get to know myself. I hope that people can come and leave with a better understanding of themselves and, and just, um, have a different perspective possibly. And, um, just leave feeling like they were like, it, it was something that sticks with them. Like I'm, I'm really not as concerned with what they take from it. I just, I want it to stick with them. I want, I want it to be something that is hard to forget that sticks in the back of the mind. And then maybe down the road, they, they can kind of come to the conclusion of what it means. Um, but yeah, basically simplest answer possible. I just, I want to, I want to entertain them and I want to, uh, I really want to hold their interest and keep them engaged as much as possible because I think that right now the theater is, is battling this shorter and shorter attention span that we have because of electronic devices and all kinds of stuff. So the, my main focus is just keeping people engaged, sitting forward in their seats and, and not looking at their phones, checking their phones for intermission or whatever that is. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the community. I'm looking forward to getting to work with Ahmed Best, who is directing the play. I'm uh, looking forward to um, working with the actors and working with people at Echo, just getting to know people and making connections. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, I'm looking forward to the creative process, um, possibly improving the writing just a little bit more um, before it's a final product. Um, and then I'm looking forward to getting their reactions from people and seeing, you know, how, how they are, uh, how they are taking it, how, how they're viewing the play, if, um, what some of their questions they have, or if they were seeing, seeing, get, getting the feedback. I mean, I'm, it's just a very, um, good thing to get feedback, um, from people. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to just, uh, seeing it. I mean, getting to actually, um, see it come to life. I hope that you watch it and I hope that you watch all the plays um, because we, the six writers in this program are emerging writers and uh, hopefully um, our voices will be um, the voices that are, that are next in line. Like uh, we are, we are the next playwrights that are going to hopefully, um, you know, become really influential in theater. So I, uh, if anything, I think it's really powerful that you can see a lot of these writers at their early stage. Um, we're all just, we all have uh, probably a lot of talent and uh, a lot of potential. And so it, I think it's really cool if you watch these plays and because you can see where we got our start from. You can see us in our early stages of, of just now starting to hopefully become professional writers. So that can be a really cool thing, I think, for the audience to get to see um, just artists who are just starting to um, to really come into their own.
Oh, it's extremely important because for so long we've only had the same voices in theater. Um, the canon and just professional theater in general for a long time has um, been from mostly the same perspectives and a lot of uh, voices haven't been heard for reasons, you know, sometimes financial, sometimes what well, producer might feel like a certain story might not sell or whatever. But it's extremely important because um, our country is extremely diverse. Our country um, has so many different voices to offer. And so if you don't, if you don't reach out and try to find as many different types as you can, then you're just limiting yourself and you're limiting your audience's perspective. Um, you're narrowing their, their viewpoint. And so it's, it's extremely important that we hear voices from all types of writers. And this includes, I think, uh, I think it's very important going forward that the theater tends to be a little more left leaning. And so I, I do think it's really important that, all types of, of voices are heard going forward, and that includes conservative voices. Um, but I also think it's very important um, that artists of color are given more opportunity. Um, minorities um, are giving more opportunity in the theater because for so long in the history of it is, it's just the simple fact is, is that they, um, they have been uh, marginalized and they haven't been uh, given the, the platform that they deserve. Without the support of Echo Theater Company, then you wouldn't have a lot of these works. You just, they wouldn't exist. Um, you know, these, a lot of the writers that are involved in this program that have been involved with this program, um, like I said, hopefully they're going to go on and, and be the writers that, that were, that we read for, you know, for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, hopefully these are the writers that are going to be emerging as um, really powerful voices. So it's extremely important that this is uh, almost the grassroots of, of theater, I think. It's, it's, it's where it starts. It's, it's uh, really making sure the foundation that, that our young playwrights, that we're investing in people and saying, we see the potential in you to be, to be great, to, be, to come into your own. But without organizations like this, there's a lot of writers like me who would probably just give up that would probably just kind of fall to the side and um, just uh, not fully engage in the work, like the six, the work that we've done for the last six months, like I wouldn't have engaged that much with it if it weren't for this company, if it weren't for Mike, if it weren't for this entire process. And I think it shows in the final product, I would not have anywhere near as good of a script as I think that I do if it weren't for Echo Theater Company investing in me and Mike investing in me. And then uh, as we see the rehearsal process play out, the, it's just going to continue. So it's extremely important because you're giving people hope and uh, you're giving young writers and young artists hope and encouragement. And um, you're, you're really, you're telling them that they're valuable and that they're important and that they need to keep going. They need to keep working. They need, during these hard times, during these really challenging times, it's so important that we continue to have young writers speaking their minds, letting their voices be heard. And uh, if you didn't have companies like the Echo Theater Company, um, then a lot of young writers like myself and the other five writers in our program, in this program, they would fall to the side and, and they wouldn't be heard and, and um, they wouldn't reach their fullest potential. And when these young writers reach their fullest potential, well, then the theater itself as a whole, the theater community can, can reach its fullest potential, making sure that we are investing in our youth and investing in our young creative minds. Hi, guys. If you uh, enjoyed this conversation, uh, the interview, then uh, go to Echo Theater, the website for Echo Theater, and you can find all kinds of information about the upcoming readings and all other things to do uh, with Echo Theater Company. Thank you, guys.